Some of the most impactful fallacies for artists may be what's holding you back from staying motivated. Artists are passionate about things like community, development, accomplishments, and just having fun, even at the expense of other aspects of their life, like sleep. But there are things as creatives that we've been taught wrong, comforted in lies and allow for contentment in a world of innovation that's always pushing forward. Creating a cocktail that is so unbalanced, it's like drinking Angostura straight from the bottle. <laughs> Acrid ink. Ugh. Got other videos I have to record. So let's make a game out of this. Keep a tally on how many of these things you've witnessed and Comment below different tidbits that you have also seen so we can maybe get a little bit of a series running with this one. Have you ever heard a work described as a family but have also seen layoffs occur around the workplace? Team building is great and all, but family is at home. And you sure won't feel like family the day that a mass layoff occurs and you happen to get the ax. Heard the phrase, don't get into this industry for money, Get into it for passion. Probably one of the worst offenders actually at the moment and with the state of the industry that it's in right now it's both a true and false statement. Early in our careers we convince ourselves that we understand the weight of this message but there's no way anyone really understands it unless you've been working for quite a while. Do it because you are passionate about task fulfillment not an acceptable pay. Because let's face it if it was an appropriate amount of pay the phrase wouldn't exist. And to be clear, passion projects happen when you feel like you have had an acceptable amount of experience that you can tackle or take on the risk of starting a side project or a business. Now you feel like it's your turn to tell the stories and be able to motivate and inspire people. In which you'll probably need a home studio, so watch my guide up here about that. We need to educate each other about finances instead of settling on this idea that it's okay to be undervalued as long as we are entertained by our own work. Been told you need to have a super powerful PC at home for work. Do you even know what each of the component does in the PC and do you know how likely it is you're actually going to be pushing it to that limit? And how often are you really going to be doing work on the machine or is it just an excuse to have a better gaming machine? Seen cases of keeping up with the Joneses in both work accomplishments as well as gear. It's easy to feel left out or feel like you're falling behind when you see other people starting new projects or accomplishing new things. But it doesn't make you less of an artist by any means whatsoever. We should always be opting to celebrate everyone's successes. There's plenty of opportunities to go around and just because somebody starts a project doesn't mean that you can't either. And please understand it's not so much of a race as it's more like a potluck where everyone just brings different side dishes. Additionally, don't feel like you have to be constantly on and doing things. And you are not less of an artist by taking time to relax. In fact, it may be possible that you could be working a lot more intentionally and earnestly. You might even be better at balancing your life. Have you ever been expected to work overtime in the middle of a production that's not even close to its final deadlines? Crunch time happens and it's part of the job but it's usually because of optimistic and linear approaches to production scheduling at fault for it. And it's not so much of an easily solvable problem. Most places will have this no matter where you go, but keeping a conversation alive about the subject is pretty important. That way there's exposure and communication happening from the artists and upwards. Scene companies promote work culture to promote brand loyalty. Now, I can touch on this a little bit more in depth in a later video, but it's important to know that both work culture and brand loyalty can actually be quite dangerous fallacies for artists. The best aspects of work culture include things like strict clock in and clock out times, diversity and representation, and the ability for staff members to actually have opportunities in pitching product ideas as well as learn new skills around the workplace. But remember that everybody is replaceable and it does not matter if you are a CEO, an architect, a lighting artist, or a lead that's been there for 10 plus years. Companies do recover even when they do not have key players on staff anymore. And remember that the sunk cost fallacy will always try to keep you comfortable, unless you're negotiating raise increases every year, exactly every year, 
you are technically being paid less if you're not negotiating above the rate of inflation. So the longer you stay in a company, the more they don't value your time as much. So we commonly see that lateral shifts between companies actually scale up your salary amount way better than staying within the company. Because I mean, things get expensive fast when it comes to software and hardware. Are you even financially literate? 